In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Uh, my brothers and sisters, congratulations. It's a joy to celebrate this baccalaureate mass with the class of 2020 of Marquette Catholic High School. What a beautiful opportunity we have here to be able to give praise to God for all the good things he's done for us, to be renewed in our commitment to serve those who are in need and to seek his mercy. We began this Mass as we began all Masses by acknowledging our sins so that we may be prepared to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, we pray, a spirit of truth, understanding, and peace, that we may know with all our hearts what is pleasing to you, and with one accord pursue what we have come to know. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is a reading from the letter to the Romans. First, I give thanks to my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, because your faith is heralded throughout the world. God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in proclaiming the gospel of his Son, that I remember you constantly, always asking in my prayers that somehow, by God's will, I, will, I may at last find my way clear to come to you. For I long to see you, that I may share with you some spiritual gifts so that you may be strengthened. That is, that you and I may be mutually encouraged by one another's faith, yours and mine. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that I often plan to come to you, though I was prevented until now, that I might harvest some fruit among you, too, as among the rest of the Gentiles. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Speed to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. <clears throat> Beloved, let us love one another because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only son into the world so that we might have life through him. In this love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his only son to explicate to explanation for our sins. Beloved, if God is loved, if God so loved us that we also may love one another, no one has ever seen God. Yet if we love one another, God remains in us and his love is brought to perfection in us. The Gospel of the Lord. For I long to see you. I want to see you. What a joy it is that we're able to be together today, though virtually, you able to see me. And of course, one of the last masses that I had publicly before all the coronavirus hit was joining the community of Marquette Catholic High School, where we saw each other in Michigan City, and you welcomed me into the beautiful parish church. And now welcome to our cathedral, this is the mother church of the whole diocese of Gary, and so it's your home too. It's a joy to be with you here today, and we long to see each other, and of course that's been a little bit more remote these days through this miracle of technology, through the hard work of the technology, we're able to experience today a baccalaureate mass. How beautiful it is that we have this mass live because this is what it will be about to happen is this miracle of what appears to be bread and wine, becoming the body and blood of our Lord, and we, though remote, will experience this in real time. You know, when we experience baccalaureate masses, commencement ceremonies, uh, it gives us a chance to reflect on what we've experienced, perhaps to ask ourselves, what will remain of all that we've experienced? What will truly last over the years? What will we take away into the future? And then ask ourselves what that future might look like what things might await us, and what we are called to do in service. And so today, the readings that you've chosen really reflect this twofold opportunity during this baccalaureate mass to be able to reflect on what lasts, what really stays over the long haul, and what we're called to do in the future. 
In my own prayer and meditation, I've been drawn during these times to a prayer by a beautiful saint, St. Teresa of Avila. She was a saint in the 1600s. And she has a, I'll call it a two-part prayer. And so I'm going to start the homily with a reference to the first part of the prayer, and then you can hold on and hear the rest momentarily. So she reflects on what really lasts, on the things that might disturb us in a passing way, what truly lasts. This is the prayer of St. Teresa of Avila. She prayed this prayer, composed this prayer in the, in the 1500s. Let nothing disturb you. Let nothing frighten you. All things pass. God does not change. Patience achieves everything. Whoever has God lacks nothing. God alone suffices. What a beautiful reflection for us to just know that we can have security in God wherever we go. And the gift of the education that you've received at Marquette, at Marquette Catholic High School is rooted in this knowledge and this security, this peace of knowing and loving God. In the first reading today, we hear this prayer of thanksgiving for the gift that God has given us. And so we hear in St. Paul's letter to the Romans that he says, I give thanks to my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, because your faith is heralded throughout the world. Really what St. Paul is doing here is saying, thank you, God. Thank you for the gift of the people that you've given me. He didn't have video technology, so he would write letters. And so the messages that he would give to communities were expressions of thanks to God for the communities themselves. And so today we come here together and we have uh, representatives from your school here present and we can echo those same words. We can say, we thank you, God, for the class of 2020. We thank you, God, for all the good that they've done. We thank you, God, for giving them as a gift to us. So St. Paul goes on and he says, God is my witness. He's saying, listen to what I have to tell you. This is, this is from my heart. God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit and proclaim the gospel of his son, that I remember you constantly always asking in my prayers that somehow by God's will, I may at last find my way clear to come to you. So, in God's will, he will lead us together in unexpected ways, and he'll bring people into your lives that you'll never have expected. But this part of the Marquette Catholic family is that we care for each other and we long to be with each other and we give thanks to God for each other. The Marquette community obviously extends beyond the class of 2020. When we give thanks to God for the gift of the students, for you graduates, it's also a way of thanking God for your parents who have sacrificed to make sure that you could have this opportunity for a strong Catholic education. We give thanks to Ms. Head and to the entire team who are a part of the faculty, the staff, the administration, who so lovingly serve you. We give thanks for the blessing that you've been to each other, and we give thanks to God for all of this. So we reflect with thanksgiving on what we've already experienced, and we know that no matter what may separate us, we're united in God. So with this great gift, if we say, boy, God, it's wonderful. You know, I have these great people that are part of my community. I had this tremendous experience at Marquette Catholic High School. What do we do with that? What does the future hold? So we don't just sit back and say, those were great memories, though they were and they are. We don't just sit back, sit back and say, that was a nice time in my life. But what happens is we're given new intensity to go forth with love, loving one another, loving God, being rooted in that love, and loving one another. That's the Marquette way. It's what's characterized your experience at Marquette and what is now before you as a challenge and as an opportunity. Here's what we hear John say. And this is love, not that we have loved God, 
but that he loved us and sent us as expiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we must also love one another. So we're rooted in this love that God has for us. We can say like St. Teresa of Avila, God, you're all I need. But we don't just sit there and say, God, it's great. I've got this wonderful relationship with you. We say, God, you love me so much that I'm going to share that love with others. You care for me so much that I'm going to share with others all that you have given to me. You know, we're here today, we call it, uh, these are baccalaureate mass and a commencement ceremony. And we th- just if we think about that word commencement, uh, in the context that we have today, it, it talks about the conclusion of something. Your time at Marquette is coming to a conclusion and you have accomplished that which you came to Marquette Catholic High School for. And so there's a certain finality to this. But think about that word, commence, to begin. To commence means to begin something. And so what lies before you is that opportunity to begin a new adventure, rooted with great confidence in all that you've been given at Marquette Catholic High School. Now, for the seniors, and you're all seniors, I was glad that when I had my last Mass with you, after Mass, we had a chance to converse, and I shared with you some tips and ideas as to how you can enter into this next stage in your life. To always make sure that you are prepared to give an account for the hope that is within you, to be able to give answers for those who might ask you why you believe, to be able to lovingly share what you've been given with others, and to be able to have a great confidence that the Lord is with you. And now things commence. They begin. And what an exciting adventure this is. Rooted in the love of God. You now have a mission to love others. I have great confidence because I know you have shown that love to each other throughout your high school experience. I'm sure there's been ups and downs and times where it hasn't shined quite as, you know, glowingly as you might want. But I know that you have shown love within your class and to others, and you've made that commitment to share the love of God. So this beautiful saint, St. Teresa of Avila, begins by saying, look, I have my security in God. He alone suffices. With that confidence, here's the second part of the prayer. Here's what she is impelled to do and what we're impelled to do. This insight into the love that we're called to share with each other. Part two of the prayer of St. Teresa of Avila. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. No hands but yours. No feet but yours. Yours are the eyes through which the compassion of Christ must look out on the world. Yours are the feet with which he is to go about doing good. Yours are the hands with which he is to bless his people. Marquette graduates, class of 2020, be the body of Christ in the world. Be the hands of Jesus, the eyes of Jesus, the feet of Jesus, the heart of Jesus and use the knowledge that you've been given of the love of God to share that love with others. With confidence, let us present our prayers before our loving Father. For the Holy Catholic Church, for Francis our Pope, Bishop McClory, and for all the bishops, priests, and deacons, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of the world, that they would work together to promote the good of all, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our hear our prayer. 
for our school community that we would continue to form the minds and hearts of all students, allowing them to grow in faith and intellect. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our graduates, that they would excel in everything they do and they would carry the love of Christ with them always. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for those who have helped our graduates achieve excellence, for all parents, relatives, teachers, school staff, clergy, and community members, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all those impacted by the coronavirus, those who have lost lives in their families and those who have lost jobs, may we all be reminded of the love of our Lord and have faith in his plans for us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially the departed family members and friends of our school, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our own needs and intentions that we now recall in our hearts, We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God and Father, we thank you for sending, on this, sending us on this mission of love. We know that you will hear and answer these prayers, for we make them through Christ who is Lord forever and ever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Look with gracious favor, O Lord, we pray, on the offerings of your servants, that they may truly understand and proclaim with confidence what is right and wholesome in your sight, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation, through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy, Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look with gracious favor, O Lord, we pray, on the offerings of your sacraments, that they may truly understand and proclaim with confidence what is right and wholesome in your sight. Through Christ our Lord. It has been a joy to be able to celebrate the Mass with you virtually. Uh, certainly, as we hear from St. Paul today, we long to be together, and we know that the Lord will provide that opportunity in his own good time. In the meantime, what we're called to do is to be so thankful for all that we've been given, to know that God alone suffices, but we don't just stop there. We share that love with others. We become the very feet, the very hands of Jesus, his eyes, his heart, to reach out to a world so much in need of his love. So stay tuned at six o'clock, the commencement ceremony will begin. This is our baccalaureate mass and you'll be able to view and have a great experience, I'm sure, uh, at six o'clock with the continuance of our uh, celebration here this day. Know of my gratitude for the hard work that you've done, for the good witnesses that you've been, and uh, really to the whole Marquette Catholic High School community, you've been uh, a great joy and one of my highlights in my first few months as the bishop is coming to experience your beautiful community. So God's blessings will be poured out upon you. Go forward with confidence. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May the blessing of Almighty God come down upon you and remain with you forever. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and proclaim the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Love tenderly.